up guys, I'm Steven, and in this one, we're getting back into the synth game. I'm super excited about this one. I've been thinking about the next one I wanna do. Right now, the rack only has one super sad VCO, which just like makes a sound by itself, which is, you know, whatever. It's necessary, but alone, it like doesn't really do that much. So in this one, I'm gonna design a sequencer to go right here, right next to it. Beautiful open space, it's calling to me. If you don't know what a sequencer is, it will pretty much step through four different notes and you can change what those notes are. So it could be boop, 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 or you could change those knobs and it'll sound like boop, 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 beep, boop, boop, boop. And you can change the tempo, so it can be like be do 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 or do 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 or whatever. Whatever you want. This one's gonna be a two-parter. In this one, I'm gonna design the circuit and make sure it all works and it sounds right and it operates correctly. And then in the second one, I'm gonna make an actual circuit board and manufacture it and make it look pretty and light up and all the cool stuff. And I promise you, the board will be matte black with a gold finish because that is the only way to finish a circuit board. It just looks so cool. Nothing will ever be cooler than that. There is no better finish. Nothing will ever compare to that. That's just. Although I wish I could say I came up with this design completely by myself, I did not. It is based on an awesome dude who calls himself Oscatone. You may have seen the OK Synth at some point. It's like a little piano kit that he sells. He also sells them complete, I think. All the parts are 3D printed, and it's like a little piano. It just like makes this cute little buzzing sound. It's awesome. I bought one from him actually at Bay Area Maker Faire last year. He's a super cool dude, but he also designed a sequencer. And I think he like sold a couple of the boards, but he never like really sold them. But he made the design open source. It looks awesome. It makes a lot of sense to me. I wanna make some changes to it and mess around with it a little bit, but it's a great starting point. And of course, any changes I make to what he does, I will also make open source. I'll publish it on GitHub. So if you guys wanna see exactly what schematics I'm using and when I make the board, exactly what the board looks like, you are free to do so. It will be available on my GitHub. One of the changes I'm gonna to make to Oscatone's design is to make it so it'll play audio out, but it will also send out CV so we can feed it into other synth modules, which is gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait to play around with that. Gosh, I'm so excited to make this thing. It's gonna be so cool to like really use this VCO I made last time in a meaningful way. Oh. Although one of the guys I built the CEM3340 module with, he built one too, and we like wired them together and they sounded dope. All right, let's design a brand new module for our synthesizers. Here we go. All right, the center of Oscatone sequencer design is the 555 timer. This is a ubiquitous chip. It's used all over the place. It was made in like, oh God, 1971. It can do a bunch of different things, but what we're using it here for today is pretty much to just put out a square wave. That's all we're really asking it to do. So we got a 555 timer and it's putting out a very steady pulse. And this is our beat. This is how frequently the note changes. And then this lovely tempo we have going here goes right into another chip. And it's called the 4017N. And it's technically called a decade counter, but all it really does is count. Every time it gets a pulse in from this 555 timer, it will change which one of those output pins goes high. Okay, so whatever. Now we have four pins that cycle through being on. Who cares? Well, this is the really cool part. All four of those pins go into Another 555 timer. I know, I know. Except we've also added some potentiometers, some little knobs that will change how strong that voltage is going into the second 555. Based on where you turn that knob, it sends a signal to this 555 timer to go at different speeds. So this timer is technically doing the same thing as our first one, it's putting out a wave, but it's going like way faster. It's going so fast, it sounds like audio. Audio is just a wave moving back and forth, right? So if you put a step out really, really fast, it sounds like a sound. So what you get now is stepping through four different set sounds that you've made with your knobs, and then they all come out at the end. Now, if I lost you there, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter. What matters is we're gonna make something that goes beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 and you can change how fast it goes and you can change what all those pitches are. And it's gonna be totally sick. All right, enough talk. Let's make the thing. All right, I got my breadboard. I got some beautiful 12 volt power coming in. Now I'm gonna drop in our first 555 timer, the one that is actually giving us the steps that moves us through our notes. Aha, there we go. All right, so this blinking happening right here is our first 555 timer. This is the one that sets the tempo for how frequently to move through all the notes. If I move this dial here, 
it will change how fast that it goes. So we can just take this little knob and put it on the front of the module and then that'll let us change our tempo. So now I've got this hooked up to my oscilloscope and you can actually see these are the waves that's coming out of the 555. So when I adjust the knob, it actually changes how long the pulses are. And this is what's gonna change our tempo. That was what was happening to light LED. Awesome, so we got our main pulse. Now we need to feed it into our decade counter that's going to click through all four of our different notes. I'm gonna drop this sucker in and wire it up. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is all set. Let's plug it in and see if this works. If this works correctly, we're gonna get the three lights going do 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 So I hope that's the case. Here we go. Cool. That's awesome. Ah, cool. So these are our four beats, our four different notes that are gonna play. So if I move that first knob that was changing how fast our pulses were, it should also change how fast it steps through these four lights. Yep. Wow, look at that. This will go be going so fast. All right, and then if we go really slow. Oh, even slower. God, I don't just mess around with like bare ICs enough. This is way too much fun. All right, so we're in the home stretch. We got our first pulse setting the tempo. We got it moving through four different notes, but now we actually need to generate those notes. So I'm gonna take the output of these four LEDs, put them into some potentiometers so we can change the actual sound, and then put it into the second and final 555 timer. And then we should be getting an actual sequencer with three components. Oh, this is so exciting. I have a bunch of 555 timers. It's so easy to just blow out a component when you're working with electronics. So usually what I'll do is I'll just buy twice as much as I think I'll need if it's like a pretty inexpensive component, which most of them are. And it has always been a good decision because I will always blow up components by accident. It's so good to have some backups and know you can just kind of like play around. And if you break a couple, it's okay. You have some backups. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we get anything. Nothing. What am I forgetting? I have some good news. I'm pretty sure it's working. So on the output of the last timer, I'm getting three different waves. Here, I'll show you. All right, so you can see it's switching between three different sized waves, which is gonna be three different pitches. And those should be varied based on my potentiometers. So here I'm gonna just move one of my potentiometers here and you can see it will adjust one of them. All right, so I'm gonna twist and make them all small so it's really easy to see. So now they're all the same size. And if I adjust one of them, you can see that one growing. Now this one's different. So I don't know how this sounds yet, but I'm gonna plug in a speaker and we'll find out. Okay, I've got a speaker here. And then I added a big capacitor at the end to turn it into AC instead of DC. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it works. Oh my God, it literally works. I'm gonna try and change the sound. We're making another module. Well, this is it. This is the circuit, the working sequencer. It just looks like a bunch of mess. <laughs> now that I have it working pretty well, I need to change a couple things so it doesn't sound quite so high pitch. I don't really know why that's the case. I'm using the exact same values that Oscatone used in his sequencer and it sounds much lower. I think I probably just need to play around with the values a little bit and I'll figure out what I did wrong. I'm also gonna add some other things to it like some switches so you can turn a note off. So it'll be like beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep. So it's like a rest, it'll like stop for a beat. I also want some indicator LEDs so you know what beat it's on. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the output so it can actually do audio, but also do control voltage. Let's say you don't like the square wave that's coming out of this thing. Instead, you could take that control voltage output from the sequencer and feed it into another oscillator like the CEM3340 that I built last time. And then you can sequence some nice mellow sine waves or whatever kind of wave you have in your oscillator. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next one, I'm gonna take this, port it into KiCad and make a circuit board. Then I'm gonna populate it, plug it in and test it out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you have not already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And make a circuit board for this project. Bird, circuit bird. I'm going to make a circuit bird.